The question about monitoring is a, is an interesting one because traditionally we've always done some temperature monitoring, but it's largely up until recently been um, geared largely towards uh, compliance. And for some markets where there's cold disinfestation a protocol, you have to probe your, your containers just because that's what the protocol says. In other instances, we have put temperature recorders in there because we've taken inherent vice insurance on the container. And if you, can, if you want to get insurance, you have to show a breach in the temperature of the container in order to um, you know, claim the insurance. So when this project came up, I guess the reason that we were excited by it was it started out being about temperature, but I actually think it's more now just about um, looking at where the container actually went. So it's, it's looking at the route the container went and it's also looking at the time the container took to make its way to the destination market. So while it started out a temperature recording, it ended up being a really neat device to actually see what was happening in the supply chain for our fruit between when we load the fruit, put it on a container and wave it goodbye at the port and when they get it and sell it. Um, so in answer to your question, what did we learn? The biggest learning we found is it's taking a very long time, typically between when we ship a container of stone fruit and when the customer actually sells it. Uh, and from the data that we've found for a sea freight voyage, it's taking over 30 days often to do that. Um, and the issue with that is that typically we know from the other work in the project that a lot of the cultivars that we're shipping are past their optimum quality. I mean, it's not bad, it's just it's missed its optimum opportunity to, to make the customer really happy. Where we started out with our, um, our testing was really largely about a, um, a, a temperature recorder that the person who received the fruit really had to get that um, fruit out and they had to download the data from the temperature recorder, which there was a whole range of problems with that. One was you really didn't see what was going on with, the, with that shipment while it was in, in journey. Um, so because you, you had to download that data and they had to physically get it. The second big problem was that often the customer at the other end couldn't find the recorder. Um, or they chose not to find the recorder, in which case you didn't get the data. So the most recent year, we've really focused on a SIM card based temperature recorder, which means when it goes by our mobile phone tower, uh, it, will, it will upload the information. And, and that's enabled us in real time to see where our, our fruit is at any given time. Uh, and it's actually highlighted some really interesting things about the route that our our shipments have taken and, and often that's far from direct. Um, so we're seeing it stopping for a long period of time or you know going into a port and then out of a port and back to the same port so doing big loops and all sorts of weird stuff. We do use air freight. Um, yeah look air freight is the, it's almost the opposite um, I guess the time, what we've discovered from the temperature probing is that time is the enemy of sea freight. So the delay costs them. And we've been delighted with the temperature. Um, so of the probing work that we've done, um, generally the temperature in the container has been very consistent. So we can't criticise the, the uh, shipping lines have done an excellent job. At, we set it at a, at a particular point and for the whole time of the journey, it is at that point. The problem is the journey is just a little bit long. It's almost the reverse with air freight. With air freight, we're pretty excited that, that realistically that the fruit's moving very quickly. So we're turning that around super fast. The problem is that the fluctuation in temperature it can be quite extreme. And we do see particularly when fruits on the tarmac in a particular, you know, usually in Australia where it's summer, um, or in Southeast Asia where it's very hot all the time, it can be left for a period of hours unrefrigerated and the core temperature gets dangerously high. So that accelerates the ripening. Um, but the time it takes, brilliant. It's taking, you know, generally less than three to five days to get to the destination mark. 
So no problem at that end. But, uh, you know, the data tells us that even if we go over about 24 hours at certain temperatures, we are doing damage to the fruit. Typically, all of the fruit that we've been shipping to Southeast Asia, um, almost without exception in the previous seasons has all been by air, just because the price difference between air and sea is, is marginal because the, the number of uh, flights from Australian cities to the Asian gateways, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, typically there's, there's a lot of flights and the price difference is not significant. Um, however, uh, this will be the first season coming up and in the post-COVID world there's, the air traffic is just not there and all of typically the vast majority of fruit goes has up until now gone on passenger aircraft. Yeah the, the government's offering some subsidies and whatever for air freight but the volume is just not going to be what it was. So we're probably looking at that and going look we think probably we're going to have to migrate more to uh, sea freight moving forward. The area that I find frustrating is is um, just the number of stops. So I think we're probably as an industry, as a summer fruit industry, you know, is there a way we could develop some shipping lines who we collaborate uh, together as an industry, you know, between mangoes. Mangoes has the same problem, that there's very limited sea freight options because the time is too long and, and they need to get it in to the market faster than the sea freight journey. So is there room to work together with the supply chain to really speed up that shipping line, to stop all the, you know, get a, a, a boat that doesn't stop 25 times before it gets to the market that it needs to, um, streamline the amount of time, like can we deliver fruit later to the to the port so that we can get it on the ship and the ship sails instead of it's, you know, spending two days uh, at the port even before it sails because every little every day that you see adds to the time and what we're trying to do is just reduce that time so anytime fruit is sitting on a boat and the boat's not going anywhere is is um, the clock's ticking we're wasting time <music>